basically, um, when we're talking about paper preservation and cracks, when we crack seal, you want to start crack sealing when it's about an eighth of an inch, right? So you want to do it early and often. And when it gets to about an inch and a half, that's about the cutoff point for crack sealing. Anything over an inch and a half, uh, it's really tough for the crack seal to be effective. So what we do, and what we kind of have here is basically a failed joint. And this is going to open up wider than an inch and a half. So if you try to crack seal in that, you're probably going to get failures, cohesive to it, failures, just because the movement is way too much for crack seal to handle. So what Mastic is, it's an asphalt-based product, just like crack seal, except there's pre-measured aggregate in there. So you can see the difference if you guys are familiar with crack sealing, and we're going to do that after this up, up on the, the little roundabout there. But um, you can't get this through a crack sealing machine because it has to go through a pump and a hose and a wand, and those don't like aggregates and anything else. If you guys are familiar with crack sealing and you accidentally hit some stone or anything in your pot, you're looking at it, that's some trouble. So this machine has a back converter just like the crack sealing machine. And the technology to heat it up is basically the same. This is a tank within a tank. This one happens to be a 400 gallon tank. So it's surrounded by heat transfer oil between those two tanks. So the back burner fires, heats that heat transfer oil, it heats, expands, and brings the temperature up on the material. So this material is gonna come out about 400 degrees. Uh, application temperatures, you're looking at like three to 400 degrees, just like crack sealing. So this is a drag box application. This has other applications for Mastic One. You can do potholes. You can do transverse cracks if you're thinking that this is the highway and they're going across. You can get a hand drag box and fill that up and drag it across the road. This is basically simulating a joint failure going down the road. So what we'll do is, it's a gravity feed right out of the back. We're gonna open that up. It's gonna fill this drag box and you're just gonna drive down the road. So if, has anybody done this in operation or seen it done? Um, I know in PA there's a lot going down uh, across 80, 83, uh, all around Pennsylvania, all through New York, Jersey, um, and even down south of here, like uh, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland. So we're going to get started here. Um, one thing you want to make sure is that everything is hot. So if you don't like the material doesn't like cold steel, cold metal. So before we start, we're going to heat up this drag box and heat up the chute. And you can see on the side here, anytime you want to have to manipulate the material, we have a side burner here where the tools are going to get heated from that uh, separate packet burner. So this machine is a diesel. It's, it's a single source fuel. There's diesel that runs the engine and diesel on the burners. You want to grab the uh, torch here and heat up the chute? So you can see on this machine, there are two hatches on this side. That's where you're going to add your material. The one hatch on the closest to me is a little taller than the other hatch. And there's a grate on there, basically, that goes on top of the grate into the, the machine. And that's where if you want to get some material out of a bucket, you can put your bucket right upside down and close that lid, and all that material is going to come out of this way out into your bucket.
kind of just drag your feet right out of the back. And that full sweep agitation is going to keep that rock and binder mixed thoroughly. So as it comes down here, it's going to find its way to the drag box. And then we'll have Chris drive up. So you can see there, you just want to keep that box full of material. And as you're driving down the road, you get that nice overband. And in the middle, it's going to fill in that, that crack. Now, when we put this down, we're going to come back and put a dressing aggregate on top of it. It's just a real fine rock. And you want to do that, it does a couple things. It kind of protects, protects the, the product there. And it also has a little bit of uh, skin resistance. But this product is, there's aggregate in it, so you already have a skin resistance. That's all right. You all right? Yeah. We're good. No. Shoot over there. Not yet. Oh, yes. Over, over again. Brian, tell him to get a little left. Chris, a little left. There's a couple things you can do. If you wait too long, you can put the dressing aggregate down. You can just strike it lightly with a torch on top. You can take some of those heating irons and go over top of it, and that'll increase the adhesion with this dressing aggregate to the mastic. And you want it to you want it to retain about about an in, or about a pound per square foot. And you can see it kind of mixes it nice with the oxidized asphalt as opposed to, you know, the, a bigger, if you're, if you're worried about the aesthetics of it. Right. 
Yeah, yeah, just the yeah, idea yeah. is that you want to be able to fall up where there's not a lot of voids that are going to block the truck. Okay. Uh, so it's all the gravel. Just yeah. And then with this, you know, it's going to be very yeah. yeah. So what you can do is take a and he's had contractors kind of fabricate their own. Yeah, this material comes in packages. Ours is a 35 pound box. Some of them might have made a package that has a bunch of boxes.